In this demonstration, we'll be showing you a comparison between the Citizen CZ1200 versus the AND EK1200i. Uh, both these scales are legal for trade. Uh, we actually, at Precision Way and Balances, only sell the EK1200i right now. Um, we'll, hopefully, in this demonstration, we'll show you why right now we're not selling the Citizen. This scale, uh, we'll go over some of the points. So anyways, both scales are 1,200 grams by a tenth of a gram, and I just want to go over some of the features here. So on the Citizen scale, when you receive it, on the bottom of the scale, they have a screw. This screw here needs to be removed. So it is designed like this to prevent the load cell from being damaged in transit. Now you'll also notice on the Citizen scale on the very bottom, you have this metal tag here, and this metal tag is identifying the model CZ1200 and that it's legal for trade. So the NTAP is 09-109. So it's a metal tag that's riveted to the bottom of the scale. You have a plastic casing, and you have four adjustable feet. And on the rear of the scale, you have an RS-232 interface and the AC adapter just plugs in. So the scale comes with the AC adapter. Um, you also have on the front of the scale a sprint bubble. And to give you some idea, um, you know, size-wise, I think this video will clearly show that the AND EK1200i has a smaller footprint. And for many people, footprint size is critical, especially in the jewelry industry because most of these shops are very, very small. So although the Citizen is a much larger scale, you'll notice platform-wise that the a and platform is larger. So you're getting a smaller footprint with the a and but you're getting a larger weigh-in platform. So weigh-in platform's a big selling point. Um, on the A&D, the A&D, let just show you some of these features. We have a couple of YouTube videos on this already. But uh, you have a nice stainless steel platform. That's removable. The same with the Citizen scale. That is also removable. Um, on the bottom of the scale, you have four adjustable feet. And the Citizen scale also has that. On the rear of the scale, you have the RS-232 interface right here. And this compartment is for putting in a rechargeable battery. The rechargeable battery is expensive, and we do have a couple videos showing it. <clears throat> um, I personally don't like the battery, uh, the rechargeable battery. I wish they would design the scale with just standard batteries, but that's not what A&D has in their marketing plans. On the rear of the A&D, this compartment right here, so you just basically press it down, there's a button. And this button right in the center, I don't know if we can zoom in and see that, but that button is for performing the calibration. So this is a key feature, and we'll be discussing this in the video. So you'll notice that the door here slides up, and if you notice on this door, there is a hole in it. And the reason why there's a hole there is weights and measures will end up putting a wire through the back, so that you won't be able to uh, press the button to perform calibration. So it's what we describe as a lockout altogether. Um, on the front of the A and D scale, you have a nice display. You have five buttons that are clearly defined. On the rear here, we have a sprint bubble indicator. And this little slot here is if you wanted to put a cable through it, so to lock down. So you have the lockdown um, availability on the A and D. And I don't see that on the Citizen, so that's one feature. So I wanted to um, plug in these scales, and the big issue is calibration and how simple calibration is, um, in my opinion, for the A and D versus the Citizen. Um, so I'm going to remove that little door on the back because we, we're going to have to press that to perform calibration. So. I first want to show you, I guess we'll go over the Citizen first and how to perform calibration. So one powers up the scale and the scale does the countdown feature similar to the AND. The AND does the exact same thing. It shows you the software revision 
and then it will go to zero zero. And if I put a cal weight on it, we'll just say one kilogram, it reads 1000.1, which is within spec. And on the A and D, it reads 1000. Um, you know, no big deal. We're going to calibrate them, but the A and D, right on the money. And this is right on the money. I mean, it's a tenth of a gram over, but that's within specification. But let's go over how to do the calibration. and You can see for yourself uh, which one is easier. So to perform calibration, what you need to do with a citizen is you need to power down the scale. When you power it up, during the countdown, you need to press the mode key. So you press the mode key. This gets you into the functions of the scale. And you need to move it, move it over. Um, so in the manual, it, it explains how to do the calibration. One of the things the manual says here, this is in section 7, it says uh, if the user wants to enter the technical parameters, the jumper K1 on the board must be shorted first. Firstly, should be first. But anyways, um, their manual doesn't correspond to the scale itself because, you know, I've never opened up the scale. So anybody can go in and perform all of these technical parameters. So in order to get into there, we're at F1. We want to go into the Cal mode. So to get into the Cal mode, what we need to do is scroll over. And you do this by pressing the mode key. So you press it once, and it says F2. Press it a second time, and you're at F3. So now we're at F3. Once F3 is there, we want to press the zero. You press the zero, and the scale tells you to unload. So nothing on the platform. And it stores the value. Now it just tells you load C. Now, we'll see on the A and D. The A and D is going to tell you what the C is. But here you need to pull out your manual. And you will see in the manual here we have the 1,200 gram unit. So you need a 1,000 gram weight. So if we put on the 1,000 gram weight, you place that right on the platform. And the scale will say pass. And the calibration has now been completed, and it's going to go and do the countdown. And we're just waiting for it to power up again. And bingo, it weighs a thousand grams. It's perfect. Now, the problem I think with this scale is this scale doesn't have a lockout. So for legal for trade status, you're not supposed to be able to calibrate the scale. They have what they call a, um, uh, an audit trail. And so if you want to see the audit trail, weights and measures would view this when they come to put the scale into service. Um, and to see that audit trail, again, you go right into the um, program. You have to power it up, shut down the scale, and I believe it's uh, you press S. Well, and that's the configuration. Well, that's not what I want. Well, one of these one of these keys will show you during power up. Let's see. Uh, I see. You press you press P. So P is showing you in the audit trail that this scale has been calibrated 15 times. Okay. So when weights and measures comes out, they're going to record 15 times, and if they come back and that number is changed. Um, you're going to be in trouble because you're not supposed to be able to calibrate the scale. It's supposed to be locked out. There is no lockout with this particular scale. The other issue I want to show you is this scale will accept any calibration weight for um, the cal mass. So if I'm in here, it says F1, I want to go over to cal. And this time, uh, once we, we see the F3, you want to press the zero. It's going to say unload the scale. It's going to store the value. So that's what that circle is. And now it says load C. But this time, let's throw on a 500 gram weight. And if we throw on a 500 gram weight, the scale is going to accept the value. And it's going to say pass. And now the scale is going to go through the power up sequence. And upon power up, 
This is now a 500 gram weight that we're using. And if we put 500 grams on, it reads 1,000. So that's really not the best uh, way to, uh, I think, design a scale altogether. With the A and D, we'll go over that calibration, and you can make your own call on what you think is a better calibration. So to perform the calibration on the A and D, I have to go behind the scale and press the button in the rear. So press the button in the rear, and I'll see Cal. Once it says Cal zero, I simply press the print key, and you'll see in the top left-hand corner of the zero, it's going to store the value. And it's calling for a thousand gram weight, so I put a thousand grams on the platform, and then I simply press the print key. And the scale says end, I remove the cal weight, press the mode key, and the scale will return to the weight function. That's how simple the calibration is. If I put the weight on, it reads a thousand. Now, I'm going to do the same calibration right now that I did, and you'll see the A and D, if I put on a 500 gram weight, it's going to say no way, it's the wrong weight. So, we're at Cal Zero, I simply press the print key, it stores the value. When I say stores the value, it's storing the zero reference point. The scale's asking for a thousand grams, so the scale identifies what you need to calibrate. I put a 500 gram weight on it. I press the print key. When I press the print key, the scale says Cal E. It's rejecting it, so it's not going to accept it altogether. So the only way to get this thing calibrated, we'll put a thousand gram weight on it. And now we'll press the print key. And you'll see the scale has now accepted it. It says end. I remove the Cal mass. Press the mode key, and off you go. The scale is now calibrated. So, the issue that you, I just want to try to point out in this is the AND EK 1200i has a lockout in the back. So, there's no way that you're able to go in and perform the calibration once weights and measures comes and inspects the scale. With the citizen scale, if you have anybody come into your place of business and they start playing around with the buttons. I always like to call it the fat finger syndrome where people like to just press buttons all day. If they end up going into the cal mode, the scale will record that in weights and measures it's a total violation. You're not supposed to be able to calibrate, you're not supposed to calibrate the scale once it's been put into service. Um, you know, performance-wise, I'll just throw some weights on, and you, you can make your opinion on which one's faster. I mean, they both, they both weigh very good. Okay, and this is a 500-gram weight, and this is a 500, but you can see this now reads 1,000. So let's, let's fix this scale because uh, it shouldn't read that. And again, that's because the scale accepted the 500-gram as 1,000. So if I'm going to do some comparison, I want to calibrate this. So again, what you need to do is shut off the scale. Turn the scale on during power up, the countdown sequence, press the mode key, hit the zero key, uh, I'm sorry, hit the mode key two more times to get F3 cal. Press the zero key, it tells us to unload the balance. The balance is unloaded, now it just says cal C, place your thousand gram weight on it. And then you'll see the zero up there in the very top left-hand corner. It's storing the full scale. And then it says pass. Remove the weight. It does the countdown. Returns to the weigh-in mode. And then you'll see it has 1,000 grams. And so it's all the money. So now we'll use the 500-gram the weight. And I'm just going to place this on here. And you can make a decision which one's faster. I would say they're, they're, they're equivalent in speed. But the big, the big thing I would definitely say is in regards to uh, calibration, uh, you're a lot safer by the A and D because of that lockout. Also, if we're going to compare manuals in the ease of use for the balance, this is the manual for the A and D EK. 
series. In A and D, of all the manufacturers that Precision Weight and Balances represents, they do produce the best manual for the end user. Very clear on how to perform um, any of the operations and set up the scale. So it's clearly defined. It's not written in Chinese. Uh, it's written in good American English and very easy to perform. Like for example, this is A and D's procedure right here on how to perform calibration. They have the texts, they have pictures to show you, they have the steps one, two, three. So it's very, very well um, outlined and it's a very, I would say, polished product. Versus the citizen scale, this is their manual. I mean, basically, it's a couple sheets of paper here and it's just stapled together. So um, this is their manual and you can see throughout their whole manual, um, there's no pictorials at all on, well, I guess there is a pictorial if you need to buy parts later on and the back page gives you some idea. But it's very, very brief and we found in regards to the calibration, the steps in the calibration uh, in the manual don't even match what the scale, uh, the way to use the scale. So I would say this manual needs some uh, better clarity. Um, I just want to go over one more thing in regards to calibration and why it's so critical. Uh, if someone was to calibrate the scale incorrectly, which can easily be done with a citizen scale, and I'll just show you this. If I power up the scale, and again, you guys will be pros at this on how to calibrate a citizen. Press the mode key, press the mode button three times to get the Cal F, hit the zero key. It says unload, so it's storing the zero reference point. Now it's saying just Cal C. Again, the book says a thousand, but I wanted to show you something. If we put on, this is a thousand plus 50, so I have a 50 gram on there. This scale will accept it. And when it accepts it, it says pass. We take the calibration weight off. The scale does the countdown. And now, if you put the thousand grams on, that should weigh a thousand grams. Just to show you, we'll put it on the A and D. So the thousand grams reads a thousand grams. Since I miscalibrated the citizen scale, that's 952.4. If I put on that extra 50 grams, it now reads a thousand. Unscrupulous businesses could play around with a scale like this by doing calibration incorrectly. And if somebody was coming into your store, to buy, uh, for you to buy their gold, you know, they could be given the wrong values. I mean, basically, if someone came with a kilo of gold and you miscalibrate it, you'd be paying them for 952.4 grams of gold. Um, for this reason, I just think for a business owner and your reputation, you're much better off with an EK1200i where it's locked out. There's no way in the world once Weights and Measures has came in, put their tag on it, you can never recalibrate that scale unless you break the seal. But with the Citizen Scale, anybody can just go into the Cal mode and recalibrate it. And again, if Weights and Measures are doing their job, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to come in and they're going to press this P key, the, the button P, and it's going to show you we've calibrated this scale 18 times. If, if that number has changed since weights and measures put that scale into service, you're going to be you know, in big trouble. When I say big trouble, some states like the state of New York, uh, we have a, a link to it. There was one uh, pawn shop that was fined $70,000. So they don't play games uh, when you want to, uh, try, to defraud the gov uh, try to defraud the public. So let's just calibrate this one more time the right way, and this will be it for the video. I just want to... Let's see, I gotta get out of this. This is to turn on and turn off the modes. So we're gonna unload the scale. It's the zero up there stores the zero reference. Now I'm gonna put on the one kilogram mass. It says pass. Remove it. Does the countdown. 
and that's it. So now one kilogram reads one kilogram on the A and D reads one kilogram. So both scales are uh, very precise once you do the calibration correctly. Um, again, I'll just try to show you, you know, for response time, I have two little cups here with some rice in it, and I just want to try to give you an example on the display. You know, as I drop it in, you can see how quick the response time is. I would say they're very similar. So that's our video on the comparison between the Citizen Scale and the AND EKI. We just wanted to highlight some of these examples. We have had some people call us, uh, want, want in our opinion between the two scales, and uh, you can make your own decision. Uh, they both weigh within specification. They are both legal for trade. Uh, I just like the ability on the AND that has the, the lockout in the back for the cow mode so you'll never get in trouble. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any other questions, visit us at either balances.com or scaleman.com. We have precision weighing balances.